Springfield, Missouri's third largest city and a crossroads for the BNSF Railway. We are at Nichols Junction, where BNSF's Cherokee subdivision from Tulsa meets the Fort Scott subdivision from Kansas City. Our first train is the southbound cold drag rolling off the Fort Scott sub. These heavy tonnage former Frisco main lines come together to form this double track main line leading to BNSF's Springfield yard and hub. Traffic on the Fort Scott sub from KC consists mostly of coal and general merchandise trains. Coal trains rolling through Springfield originate in the Powder River Basin mines of Wyoming and are destined for power plants in Springfield and the southern states beyond. Listen in as the distributed power units whine as they push the rear of the train through this tight curve here at Nichols. The reporting marks on the coal cars, RWSX, provide the clue as to where this train is going. Georgia Power's Robert W. Scherer Power Plant near Macon, Georgia. BNSF will hand this train off to Norfolk Southern for the final leg of its journey. Note the former Burlington Northern SD-70 Mac, still in its original executive style paint from the 1990s. Next up is this eastbound Monette local train on the Cherokee sub, headed up by a rebuilt former Santa Fe GP30, followed by two other sister units still in original Santa Fe paint. This train serves industries between Springfield and Monette. Seen here are some tank cars from a chemical plant in Verona. On the weekends, such as this day, these trains can be fairly short. But during the week, the local also interchanges cars with short lines, Arkansas and Missouri at Monette, and Missouri and Northern Arkansas at Aurora. The train can be quite long. Take a look at this one at nearby Brookline, headed up by this blast from the past, a solid set of former Santa Fe units, this nearly 20 years after the BNSF merger. The Cherokee sub handles traffic to and from Tulsa and the Santa Fe Transcon from California. Intermodal and general merchandise make up the bulk of traffic on this route. Now let's head over to Eldon Street on the east side of Nichols Junction. It doesn't take long before another loaded coal train rounds the bend off the Fort Scott sub. This one is headed for the Plum Point Energy Station north of Memphis. Milepost 241 marks the distance from St. Louis. Here we see the helpers giving it their all for this one last mile into Springfield Yard. Notice yet another former BN unit. The crew has just minutes before quitting time. The yard around the bend is a crew change point for all trains through Springfield.
Minutes later, we hear another horn coming off the Cherokee sub. It's a mixed freight coming in from Tulsa. The second locomotive here is a lease unit from City Rail. As soon as the train clears the crossing, a mixed freight headed to Tulsa comes along. Next, we head back to the west end of the junction at Meteor Street, named for Frisco's premier passenger train which last plied these rails in 1967. We head to the side of the Fort Scott subdivision. Kansas City is 198 miles behind us. Red signals telling us more trains are on the way. We see this intermodal hotshot cross into view on the Cherokee sub. This high priority train originated in California and took the old Santa Fe Transcon to Avard, Oklahoma, where it switched to former B and Rails for the trek here and eventually Memphis. Finally, the Fort Scott sub comes back to life. The rails begin to sing under this empty coal train headed back to Wyoming. Most of these cars are lettered for Associated Electric Cooperative's power plant in New Madrid, Missouri. The train ducks under Interstate 44 and heads off into the sunset. Soon comes another empty coal train headed north, led by a former Burlington Northern unit.
a nearly new SD-78 springs up the back. As the sun goes down, we see the headlights of another train. But we're glad we stuck around to see this run through Union Pacific Coal Train. Both UP and BNSF are represented in the distributed power units consist shoving from behind. A few weeks later, we are back at Nichols Junction for a day of rail fanning out on the Fort Scott subdivision. It's a cloudy but beautiful spring morning as we catch this solid set of GE units and original BNSF heritage paint leading up this hotshot intermodal for the Los Angeles area. Back on track, now along the Fort Scott sub, we hear an unfamiliar chime for these parts of Missouri. It comes from this Amtrak P-42 unit. Regular passenger trains haven't come through Springfield in almost 50 years. This is a special excursion hosted by High Iron Travel and Iowa Pacific, a rare mileage trip on the old Frisco. The train of private vintage passenger cars books it out of town, bound for Kansas City. <laughs> Heading out of Springfield, the first major town is Ash Grove. Here we find a general merchandise, KC bound freight, headed through a scenic cut in the downtown area. The trackside action can be seen from the train watching patio of Mama Loca's Cafe and Cantina along Ash Grove's historic Main Street. Ash Grove was once a junction between this original Frisco line and another secondary Frisco line to Kansas City, abandoned just after the Great Depression. We head northwest to a point out in the countryside called Everton, about 25 miles from Springfield. It's all upgrade from Nichols Junction all the way through here. These Jeevos put on a loud performance on the head of this empty RWX coal train running from the Schur power plant in Georgia back to Wyoming. The Fort Scott sub is one of the heavier tonnage main lines on the BNSF system, the vast majority of traffic being coal trains like this.
After a short return to silence, a rumble in the air means it's train time once again. Here we have eight units leading up this seemingly overpowered empty coal train, heading back west from Alabama Power Company's James H. Miller Power Plant near Tupelo, Mississippi. Now we head back towards Springfield. This is Elwood, the first siding out of Nichols Junction and a common site for meets between trains coming in and out of Springfield. Here we see a mixed freight that was diverted to the siding, waiting its turn to head to Kansas City. A check of the signals reveals the wait time for this freight is about over. Another coal train, this one loaded and destined for Alabama Power and Tupelo, blares its horn for the Highway AB crossing. We find another one of those old BN SD70 Max on the rear. After our coal train clears the main line, this freight chugs to life and is ready to highball. It'll be in Kansas City later on in the evening.
It's just one of many trains this day keeping the rail shining on the Fort Scott subdivision. Our next stop on another day is east of Springfield Yard on the Commercial Street footbridge. You can almost feel the vibrations as this SD-70 Ace coasts underneath with an empty Georgia power coal train. This train came off the Thayer North subdivision, linking Springfield and Memphis, Tennessee. On yet another outing after a spring rain shower, we caught this double stack intermodal bound for California slipping underneath the bridge. This popular spot for train watching straddles the double track main line between the main yard and Teat Junction, where traffic can branch off north to St. Louis or south to Memphis. Tracks underneath here make up the small north yard, used for car storage and switching by local trains serving nearby industrial customers. Traffic on the Cuba sub to St. Louis is light as usual, about a half dozen trains each day. So we head south of T-Junction on the Thayer North subdivision. Here an SD-70 Ace leads up another loaded Georgia power coal train, crosses busy Division Street. The Thayer sub is by far the busiest main line in and out of Springfield. Most trains from both the Cherokee and Fort Scott subdivisions are funneled onto the Thayer line, equaling about 30 to 60 trains a day. Days later, we're waiting along the Thayer line at the Pythian Street crossing. We are met by another loaded coal train bound for Alabama Power. The DPU consist in the rear includes one of those city rail lease units, a common side on BNSF trains in the Ozarks, at least during the spring and summer of 2015 when this film was produced. Several miles east is the town of Rogersville, the first siding out of Springfield on the way to Thayer and Memphis. Standing near the Highway B crossing in the little downtown, we're greeted by the same coal train we've just seen in Springfield.
Quiet eventually does return to downtown Rogersville, but likely not for long, knowing this very busy main line for BNSF.